It's Tuesday. Back on a Techno Tuesday. As Luminous Cloud pointed out, 99.9% chance this is a one-off. We're not necessarily switching to Tuesday, although I like doing weekday streams sometimes. I just figured since I had to miss last Saturday, wasn't feeling well, had a sore throat, didn't want to be coughing at you guys for an hour. And this weekend is a holiday weekend. I'm going to be away with the family. So why not slip one in during the week? And that is why it is Techno Tuesday. All right. Luminous Cloud is here. Nice to see you, Sean Hodgson. Hodgson? Oh, my God. <laughs> What's up? That's right. Tuesday is techno this week. Aaron 303. That's right. Simple Sam. Stereo Decor. Derek Walsh. What's up? How's Glasgow today? Eatsy's here. And uh, Awkward. <laughs> Awkward is here. Looks like that's it. I figured on uh, as a surprise on a weekday, it wouldn't necessarily be uh, full on right at the beginning. Maybe some people will trickle in as we go. Uh oh, it's the build up. All right, had to let the drop happen. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Oh my God, rewind. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Why am I? It must be because it's Tuesday. Why am I tripping all over myself today? I can't even speak straight. It's 343TV, brought to you by 343 Labs. My name is John Selway. It's Techno Tuesday. Usually it's Saturday. I don't know. I like the, the alliteration of Techno Tuesday. Maybe we'll do this more often. I've been, you know, Saturday's good. There's more people hanging out that can, you know, sit uh, sit and chill out for an hour while I, I do stuff. I know a lot of you are at work right now. In a way that it, you can kind of look at it this like you're listening to a podcast. You don't have to watch me. You can just listen to me talk and listen to the music that I'm working on. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's what's happening today. It's Tuesday. As I mentioned in the, in the little lead up there, uh, I, I won't be here uh, on Saturday. So I figured I had to come in and do this before we have our, our holiday break. So, and I noticed some of you in the chat mentioning the new update of Ableton Live, the public beta. We're at 11.3 and there's a new, you know, there's a bunch of new stuff, I'm sure. But I think the, the main news is there's a new synth uh, called Drift. And yes, I figured since they just announced it, why not see what it sounds like? So yeah, uh, I started a track using Drift and I'm just, checking that out and you know no great big concept here we're just making some music making some techno music and playing around with some new stuff and i'm keeping it simple just using live devices or max for live devices 
and um, just kind of focusing on seeing where the sounds take me. Who else is here in the chat today? Anyone new? Mike Wasquila. Hey, first time catching the stream live. Thank you very much. Glad to have you. Playing your first live hardware techno set this month. Fantastic. Hopefully you'll, uh, you'll get some documentation of that. You know, let us know. You can share uh, in our Discord, right? We have our 343 Labs Discord. Cross your fingers that the link in the description below is working. Um, you know, we just had our, our feedback session with uh, Carl Finlow recently. Now it's time to schedule another techno feedback section. session. Let's see. I did it again. I keep stumbling today. Um, and also, if you're interested in knowing more about what we do, here with 343 Labs Music Production School in New York and in Berlin and online. There are links below where you can find out what classes we have coming up. For example, after at the end of April, after I come back from the break, I'm doing a two-week, six-class sort of mini online making techno course. And uh, it's pretty much, I'll say it's good if you're just starting out, if you're kind of a beginner at techno, Right? I mean, okay, you could come in if you already are doing some stuff and you just want to get into the details. But uh, yeah, why sell, why sell it short? If you like techno and you want to do a six uh, class course with me making techno, think about it. There's information there in the link below. There's still time to sign up. It's online. We can take as many of you as Zoom can handle. Great. So yeah, it'd be cool if you want to hang out. Check it out. And, all right, enough about that. What else are you guys talking about? Cherry Audio. That is true. Cherry Audio makes amazing synth plugins for very reasonable prices. And I have not checked out this Mercury 6 yet. I think I probably should. I mean, they're, they're inexpensive enough that I could, like, justify spending, like, 30, 40 bucks or whatever it is to, like, check it out on the stream for you guys and make some techno with it and see whether we like it or not. And I think we probably will, because like there are very few synths and instruments out there that you can't make decent music with. You know, it's, you just got to be creative with it. Even a not so awesome synthesizer can be awesome if you team it up with effects and some clever ideas. So yeah, I think that's pretty much how I feel about things. Like you use what you've got. You don't have to have every perfect thing or the most expensive synths or a modular system or like a huge studio. You can play with like little dinky toys and, and still make cool music. So it's all good. Now, Future World Machines, welcome. You're here. Uh, Manuel M is on uh, uh, Twitch. We got the multiple chats coming in from the different streaming uh, destinations. We'll check his back. Nice. You like Tuesdays, huh? Tuesdays would be better for you. Maybe, yeah, maybe we could alternate. I got to see. We'll see how it goes. It could be especially also over the summer. You know, maybe we do a little bit of a different schedule over the summer. Well, you know, we'll talk about that with the powers that be here at 343 Labs. All right, enough yammering. Let's take a look at what's happening here today. I've got drift in here. And... At, at my, my first impression was, oh, it's kind of like, you know, like a simple analog synth. Like, are they replacing analog? No, I don't think so, because it has some different capabilities. It's got a different sort of tonal character. And yeah, my first sort of idea was to just to start playing with it. And um, I've added some Max for Live expression control and, and, and modulation routing already which tells you something, immediately I was like, what can I modulate with what, right? And um, it's limited in a way. And I think it's probably that way on purpose. I, I, if, if I get it, that sort of the intention of this is to be like not too complex of a synth, but very expressive, you know, like working with MPE. If you look at here in like the modulators, right, you've got pressure and slide. Right away when you load up a, a the drift, it's got slide which is an mpe parameter you know where you have your finger moving back and forth across the key right so it's sort of set up to be expressive from a you know a playing standpoint right away but of course i had to make it complicated and put random i wanted to like randomly change the wave shape and stuff like that so I, anyway let, let's have a listen <laughs> to what this thing sounds like 
Already there's some reverb on there. Let's turn the reverb off. So this was the, the first sound that came up with. Just trying to do some kind of slightly offbeat monotone bass note groove with the kick drum. Let's crank that up a little bit in the studio. I want to feel it. And you can see the, the shape is modulating randomly. Let's get rid of that. Let's back off of that. I'm, I'm overdriving the filter. That's one thing I noticed right away that sounded pretty cool. It's like running hot into the filter. And we got this nice shape control to go from a nice, it's a saturated sawtooth wave and now I'm kind of adding harmonics to it. And I wanted, I like this, I like doing kind of like random sample and hold type modulation. So the first thing I tried was going to one of these LFOs over here in the mod tab. And um, let's see, making that a sample and hold and putting re-trigger on. This is a trick I do all the time with live uh, devices, well, in other sense. Um, and the rate's really slow. And, you know, what I thought would happen is if I re-trigger it, I'm going to get a random sample and hold value every time I play a note, right? So that was what I thought. Okay, and so I'm going to assign that random sample and hold that's being re-triggered every time I play a note to the shape, which is what I was just playing with. But it's not changing! <laughs> so that kind of threw me off at first. Remember, this is public beta, so maybe there's a chance for them to fix this. But that was not the expected behavior that I thought would happen. So now, if I go back and increase the... Now it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's like randomly wobbling that shape around. But that's not what I wanted. What I, what I wanted was the, the value of that shape to change every time I play a note. So in order to in, in order to do that, I pulled out the expression control, which has a every time you play a note generates a random number control here, right? So you can see every time I play a note, it's doing a different value. And I have that because I like to be able to map one thing to many things. We have this uh, multi map Max for Live device, so that lets you have take one input and split it to up to eight or yeah, up to eight outputs, eight destinations, all right? So, so we're gonna map the shape. And he also was like, oh, what would happen? Can I automate the wave form? So I clicked map again on the multi-map and now it's doing this kind of weird glitchy thing. It's switching between waveforms. Now, that doesn't always, I don't know. That was just what happens if I do a thing, but it sounded kind of cool. All right, added a little growl with a, a, a sawtooth wave tuned down a little bit. And then a bunch of crazy reverb on it. And I liked how this sounded. It's a little too random, but it was a cool, cool thing that came out of that. All right, so, whoa. I, have, I actually had this duplicated. I tweaked it a little bit, worked on it a little bit, and then I started getting these brighter, sharper. All right, put a bunch of reverb on it, something that I could hit. Uh, stabs or do weird little squelchy weird crazy things. I'm just sort of randomly hitting notes on the keyboard. All right, let's get rid of that reverb for a second. And you'll notice at the same time, this is the only non Ableton Live thing I'm working with today. This is a plugin that I never heard of. It's not new, but I just came across it recently, and it's really cool because. 
one thing I, I love about Ableton Live is it remembers the MIDI that you're playing, even if you're not recording and you can capture that, just hit that button and then whatever you've been jamming along with or playing with, it'll be in the buffer and it'll copy it into a clip. And so you, you never could, like if you forget to record or you're having a good time jamming and you're getting into it and you forget, right? It's still there. So this does that for audio, right? I saw a little uh, video on this online recently and I thought that's amazing, right? So I have this set up uh, after the synth before the effects. So if I hit like, you know, just make little phrases or uh, different combinations of sounds or if I'm playing a sequence, like that's all getting in there. And because it's random, it's going to capture what that was, and then I can just select that and drag it onto an audio track, and it's right there. And it even if it's on it's if it's a rhythm and it's like a number of bars, it, it even it looks like it's even detecting the beats. It looks like it's almost on time here, which is crazy. So it's you know right. You don't need a plugin to do this. You can set up a track in in, in Ableton to record or resample whatever's playing, um, but. I just, I like this workflow where it's just always going. You don't have to remember to set up a track, to hit record, to capture what you're doing. It's just, you know, you can set a buffer size for however many seconds or minutes you want it to run. It automatically saves on your hard drive. And then you drag it into your project and there it is. It's, I like that. I really like that idea. So yeah, that's, and that's rolling sampler. It's always rolling. Anyway, that's what I decided to do. Instead of having it random all the time like this, and then I was playing around with it, but adding notes on top. And not even trying very hard to do anything interesting, just randomly hitting notes. And just remember, that's all being recorded without the reverb. All right. I have that, I can select it. Right, all of that stuff is there. And then All right, let's go and make just like a one bar loop or a two beat loop. All right, that's a little weird, but you get the you get the idea. All right, you know, it's rough, right? I wasn't being careful. But you could chop this up, you could take just one little piece of it. All the stuff you normally we talk about when we're doing resampling and adding, you know, taking audio and processing it into something new, using effects or editing or whatever. Um, and what I came up with, I'm just gonna delete those because I don't need them, was this. Real simple. It's got a reverb on it. It's another thing I've been playing around with is just adding different types of spaces and reverbs to everything. Not like lots of washes of reverb, but just something to make it kind of jump out of the speakers and be in a slightly different space from other things. Like that sounds good. That's adding atmosphere and space and depth to it, just a little bit. Hey EKS, glad you could make it today. Yes, Simple Sam, wild stuff, let alone on a Tuesday. Everybody wake up, we're banging it. That's another variation here. It's a little more subdued and it's almost like triplety. I didn't, I, I can't decide whether I want it to be like straight or have it uh, straight or uh, triplet. And you know, yes, where is that luminous cloud? Sounds a bit off beat. And yes, I'm feeling that too, but I also kind of like that. Sometimes I like those grooves that are almost about to fall all over themselves and it has energy, right? So any, we'll, we'll think about that. We'll think about whether we keep that. Um, all right. I started thinking I need some percussion on this. Um, and another thing I'm trying out recently, well, not very recently, but samples from Mars, you guys heard of them? 
uh, every year they do a, a period of time where you can get all of the samples that they sell for like a ridiculously low price. And every year I'm like, oh, I should do it. And then I miss it. And this year I, I, I saw the, the email about it and like, oh yeah, all right. So I'll spend these, this tiny amount of money for this huge amount of samples that they spend a lot of hours doing, uh, working on. And, uh, uh, now I just have been sort of slowly going through, it's just a, mostly old drum machines, but recorded really well. And of course, all most of these drum machines and drum samples are out there for free everywhere if you search hard enough. But it's nice to have them organized in one place. And, you know, it's got the raw WAV files. It's got presets for different samplers and different uh, DAWs, different instruments. So it's all just right there, ready to go. And I literally just picked the first... <laughs> folder that this viscount drum machine you know and it's a cheesy old drum machine but i just decided i'm gonna make this work whatever it is real simple just some nice shiny analog hi-hats and a sample clap just to accentuate you know and in a groove like this where it's sort of off beat you don't want to have too much syncopation on your drums you want to keep them kind of straight all right Let's hear how it sounds with the other, uh, the other version. That could be like an alternate section. And I'm already thinking about... Doing stuff like that. A little bit of melody, but weird and tweaky. Maybe, maybe. Oh, I didn't even realize we're recording that. <laughs> really simple. I like... Sometimes I like... Techno tracks that are musically like... They'll have like a strong melody, a strong idea, but it has like striking sounds, but not too many layers. You know, a groove like that, if you if you work it just right with your arrangement, could really sound huge. Like, I don't need too many layers with this. And I started thinking about, like, I have this monotone, tweaky bass thing, right? And then maybe occasionally adding higher notes to do something a little bit mel melodic, but not too much, right? Still techno. And then I thought, that's a really grindy kind of rough sound. It would be nice to balance it with a smoother, prettier sound, maybe. It's something to bring in into break or whatever. And uh, <laughs> what's up? Villain says, needs a bit of rumble. Well, yeah, we're not there yet. Yeah, you know, before I go into like the, the, the pretty melodic stuff that I would do, but I did already kind of put a, a reverb on the kick drum. It's not rumbly, but it, I mean, it's subtle. Right, that's dry, and then we have... So there's a little bit of hum. Not rumble, but you know what I mean. It's adding... That, again, it's that idea of using reverbs to add space to the sounds without being too much, right? If I wanted this to be rumbly... Maybe more of that stuff, I don't know. I'm already messing it up. All right, no, I don't want to mess it up. Let's go back. Right, I just wanted that. I've talked about this before. Having lots of effects and reverbs and, and, and rumbles and things on tracks and make them sound big and cavernous like warehousey but also it's sometimes it's good to have drier stuff that's going to be played in a big uh rumbly room reverby room like a warehouse or you know something like that and i've pointed this out before but i always like listening to tracks mostly when i'm mixing them but sometimes when i'm even making them through these convolution reverbs that i have 
that are um, emulating well their 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 impulse response is recorded over PA systems in clubs and in warehouse spaces. So like. <laughs> Like that's what it's sort of going to sound like in a big room. So it's not super rumbly, but you get more of the idea of how it's going to sound on a bassy system. It's banging, it's still banging, but clean. So I think I want to kind of keep it on the clean side, not go too rumbly. You get the idea. And I've been holding off on this, but like, sometimes I think I just want to filter this. <laughs> so we'll just use Live's auto filter and so I can bring it back a little bit. Now I put it before the saturator, after, sat after the saturator, I don't know. Mm. It's a little grittier putting it four. We're still hearing some of the harmonics added to that. That's cool. What's up, Alexander Samander? Nice to. I'm getting a, a, a quite a few first time watching live uh, viewers today. That's great because. Um, I guess it's because we're on a different day and you, <laughs> we are not available on Saturdays. So glad to have you. Welcome. And yeah, Brandon Braun, what's up? He's saying what I was saying. Dry stuff sounds better on a system, much clearer. Rumble sounds good in headphones, but can be muddy in the club. I think it can be good in the club if you mix it right. If it's too much though, yeah, it can be muddy. All right. I don't want to do too much of this like filtering up and down thing though. I mean, it always works. I just do it so much. Maybe we need uh, some more driving hi-hats on this. Something like that. I'm not going to use the ones from there. I'm just going to use, let's just go for an easy 909. Although maybe I have some weird 909 samples. There's the 909 from Mars. We could use those since I was talking about it. And I have these processed 909 samples in the Wave Alchemy synth drums that I, I always use. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> let's just go for straight. Let's, yeah, let's see how the samples from Mars 909 sounds. We've got one sampled in a... Is that a is that, is that 612? Is that a sampler? I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll just go for the 909. Load up the Ableton Live preset kit. Friendly, dirt, color, clean. I guess they have different types of processing they do. Um, let's just try clean for now. All right. Go in there, throw in some hi-hats. How do they have this organized? It's different. Hmm, not super bright and clean. They didn't really EQ it. It's, I think that that's just like how it comes out of the signal path, whatever signal path that they're using. All right, I mean, that's dead on normal <laughs> open hi to uh, open 909 hi hat. Let's see how we can tweak that. Not really much I can do to that. Is that the right? That's pitch. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's just, uh... yeah, it's kind of a short one, isn't it? I want it to be brighter. This one has a, a low pass filter on it. That's one thing I like about the, the Ableton Live 909 kits is it's got high, it's got high and low in there already. Um, We'll just do it the, the old fashioned way and put an EQ on it. Sometimes I like making my hi-hats distorted. Let's see what happens with that. 
There you go. That's more like it. Totally exaggerated. Sounds old school. I'm going for like 90s, a little bit banging, but not too hard, I think, is where we're at right now. Definitely dirty. Really simple arrangement, just switching hi hats on and off. That'll work. What time is it? It's 1:30. Easy way out. Okay. Let's pause for a moment. <laughs> it's halfway through. It's Techno Tuesday. Instead of the usual Selway Techno Saturday. Uh, as I mentioned earlier... Yeah, I couldn't, I wasn't feeling well last weekend. And then this coming weekend, I'm going to be away. So this was the opportunity to do it. Didn't want to leave you hanging for another week without saying hello and making some techno with you guys. And I really, you know, really like the fact today that we've got a bunch of first time live viewers. Really appreciate that. Glad to see a bunch of new names in the chat. What exactly are we talking about? Let's see. Netrunner says, sick of filtering like that, LOL. Yes. I am going to try to avoid doing too much of that in this particular track when I get down to arranging. There's got to be other interesting ways to like make sounds vary over time beyond low pass filter. It's like, that's like techno 101 and it works and people keep doing it. But yes, definitely going to try to avoid that for right now uh well in ultimately if not right now i agree there's got to be other ways to do it let's see luminous cloud is meant calling out gold baby as go-to for drum sounds and absolutely i have some gold gold baby stuff um mostly the free ones there's a bunch of really good free packs from gold baby so definitely everybody go check those out and uh, let's see, Brandon Braun, this sounds like late 90s Beltram. I mean, okay, Beltram and other producers, but yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking with that grindy bass and the tight drums. Uh, it's a sound I really like. And uh, yeah, it, it, it just came about, you know, going back to, uh, you know, this new synth that, that we're talking about from Ableton, for this drift, you know, it was just the sound that I came up with starting from default, just starting from, you know, not a preset. That's what happened. And I, it reminded me right away of, you know, when I was kind of playing around with that shape and uh, running, just saturating it. It had this, it's like warm and clean at the same time. I don't know. The filter sounds good. And that, and then um, when it was getting buzzy with the, with the sawtooth wave in there and that pattern that I came up with initially, that's just, okay. Let's roll with that. It's definitely a good example of letting, the, and this happens all the time in techno. It's like you're letting the sound design and the synth, what the synth sounds like, lead the musical idea and kind of rolling with it. That's how I often like to do it. Cool. What else are you guys talking about? Aaron wants us to make drum sounds with the new synth. Um, we could. I mean, what we really need for good punchy drum sounds with the synth is like pitch modulation and noise pretty much we could try that agent orange is here what's up yes i agree hey yes less is more you don't need tons of stuff all the time sometimes i overdo it because i like dense deep complex sounds and musical ideas but I'm going to try to limit. I do have another musical idea for this, and it's it's going to be a make or break for some of you, whether you like it or not. I like it. <laughs> I'll just tell you now. We haven't heard it yet, but I like uh, this idea of taking this dry, grindy, ravey thing and then 
adding an atmospheric, nice melodic element to it as a, you know, we'll see. We'll see if it works. Cool. Okay. One more. I've noticed, Stereo Decor says, I've noticed that the rumble should be almost over before the next kick and then the track sounds clean in the club well yeah if you if you put a you know you could tell if you put like a bunch of big long reverb on a kick and it go you have to do the side chain thing you have to shape the rumble so it gets out of the way and doesn't take over the kick drum the kick, kick's got to punch through it you know and whether you do that with eq or side chaining or careful mixing or whatever like Yes, absolutely. You're right. You can you can have a rumble that sounds clean and tight in between the kicks so that it doesn't overwhelm the subwoofers and sound like mud. Good observation. All right. Let's go back and see what's happening. All right. So I, I loaded up. I was curious. You know, my first impression of the synth was just loading up a default instance of drift and just playing with it and seeing what it sounded like and that's that sound i came up with um but then i thought hey let's see what else it can do and i just started going through some presets so i don't know let's see i picked one already but let's check out some presets for those of you who have never heard this instrument before all right and a lot of these are racks that have um, effects on them, right? So you can hear there's some stuff going on there that's... That one's dry, though. That's that's like a pure example. And I'm sure most of you who use live know this. When you're going through the presets, the ones with the little icon that looks that like it's split in half, that's a rack, so it's combining a synth with other effects. And that one that doesn't have the little split in it is just the synth with no effects on it. That's good. I like that. That one, gosh, it says deep bass. It's so deep we can't even hear it. Dub techno bass. So it says this has a nice warm sound. I like that. We've got some brass sounds. Hmm. That's interesting. That's like a that's a very brassy, like realistic in, uh, synth brass right there. All right. So it's a decent synth got some good modern presets right they sound current i mean honestly that that's something like when you go through like presets for the older instruments like analog those a lot of those presets you know could stand to do with some updating i think but that's just me that's a percussive sound um i end up ended up picking because i was saying i wanted something kind of smooth and nice I, I ended up picking this ranger bell sound And you're like, how is that going to fit, right? <laughs> um, but just, I liked it right away going through the, the sort of the percussive or mallet sounds actually. And, you know, just as a sound design exercise, how did they make it sound shiny and metallic when usually you, a lot of people use like FM synths and like digital synths to make shiny metallic sounds. But, um, and that, so that was interesting, you know, and it's really how the, the oscillators are tuned apart. Because you've got you got oscillator two doing this nice, just it's just a clean triangle. All right, and there's a bunch of reverb on it too, just so you know that's not in the sound. But then for to do the the bright high harmonics, it's got oscillator one. You know, it's like a thinned out sawtooth wave. So, yeah, it's just how they tuned it. So it makes it sound like a metallic overtone on top of that. And then another thing I like about this is that you can see there's a drift control, right? So, and this has got to be obviously what they named the synth after. It has this kind of flowy detuning kind of thing going on. And yeah, so that's giving it that pitch drift. It's making it sound and move around in interesting ways. So... I thought that was a nice sound. Simple, but effective. All 
And so what did I come up with? Well, like for a break, basically, I thought it'd be nice to have this whole heavy driving thing and add this like hanging, floating thing. And I came up with, with a bit of a progression, right? I don't want to get too trancy, but I like, especially for like summertime techno tracks, festival, like it could be driving and heavy, but then have like a really feel good moment. <laughs> Right, so. That's it. Really pretty, it's almost too much. Yeah, this should be full on, right? And I'm thinking, how can I make this sound bigger? I mean, I can bring up the filter. Right, but weren't we just saying there's got to be other ways than using filters to make ch changes to the sound? So, yeah, right away, I wanted to have something bigger and fuller that I could play with that's more kind of modern and detailed sounding. So I decided to run this through a spectral resonator. And so this is going to be crazy. <laughs> but I have it set to be tuned by the incoming MIDI and the MIDI from is the same track. So the MIDI that I'm playing, let's go back to the simple one, just the drone, right? So those MIDI notes are playing into the resonator. And then let's hear what it sounds like when I mix it in. Right, so it's kind of taking that, it's got this granular modulation on the harmonics. And then on top of that, I'm really spacing it out with the spectral blur, which is going to be like a reverb basically, like a grainy reverb. Let's hear how it sounds on the big one. Right, this sounds pretty crazy. Shifting the harmonics of that spectral resonator up and down. It also sounds nice when I do the stretch down to 50%. Whoa. Maybe not. It's weird. I thought it sounded better earlier. Okay, so that's something to play with. How am I going to make this work? I'm getting so lost in it now. I love sounds like that. I like these kind of, uh, I mean, I think of it as like in the 90s bands that I like, these shoegaze bands that were just like walls of guitars and effects. My Bloody Valentine. Uh, 
What's another one? That's, I mean, that's my favorite one. Lush was good. I'm sure some of you guys that are my age out there that listen to this kind of music know as well. Was Ride one of them? There's some really good bands that have this like thick, it's like hard and soft and big and lush all at the same time. with just lots of reverb and distortion. So I was kind of thinking like something like that, but mixed with this kind of clean, tight techno groove. What do you think? Could it, slow dive. Yes. Slow dive. Absolutely. Good one from Mundalator. So yeah, Netrunner is pointing out with those chords, tone changes, but still moody. I don't necessarily want it to get like in your face, like ravey. I want it to be like relaxing for a moment. So, you know, it's all going to be about how I can um, work that in in the arrangement. Uh, anyway, so let's listen again to what we've got. We'll see if I can start making some sense of this and making a plan to go forward. I'm not going to arrange this all today, but I'm going to start thinking about how I want to do it. Just that's great. Not sure about the hi hat, that's just a placeholder, placeholder for now. And we have I have this idea of Riding the line, not trance, not trance, but like a little touch of like epic. Something like that. Also thought about having a variation of it, like darker, lower kind of variation. But maybe without that random modulation of the waves. Let's chill that out for a second. I like that. Not too, not too bouncing around. Something like that. But how do I get from that to this? That's gonna be, an, that might be too much. We'll see. And then we have this. I need a, I need a clip without the rides in it. Just the clap. We got the ethereal thing. We have to break. Still not sure about that hi hat. And I know you said no filters, but maybe just here. All right. It's an idea.
and then, you know, just go back into it. What just happened? I just triggered a clip I didn't mean to trigger. It's crazy. Okay. I have a rough idea now. Got to play with the synths for sure. Maybe I should get some more variations of this captured into a uh, rolling sampler. Let's throw this over on the other one. Got the more percussive one. Less grindy, but it's sharp on the at the beginning of it. Alright. So I have that. Could drop that in as a variation. Let's give that a new track. How did that sound by itself? I'm not sure if this one got, if we got the, the timing right on this one. Let's see if it works with the kick drum. Yeah, see it, <laughs> the warping got messed up. Right, I mean, I can fix it. If we just do, let's do one bar. There. Now it's fixed. I know that's bugging some of you. I know you're like, it's not quantized. It's off. I'm like, I know, but I like it. If I did want to fix it, let's see what I would do. No, not that. There it is. Even tighter now, because I uh, changed the beat preserve to not loop and to have a faster decay. More jacking now, right? Maybe this one's too early. Now it's the same rhythm each, each, each two beats. I like that. How does it sound with this? sound with this too much right definitely can't layer those sounds they've got to or at least if I do layer them they have to be severely sculpt sculpted cool what do you think about Trump getting uh, brought in today huh New York is on high alert there's helicopters <laughs> not to get into politics today but it's, it's on everybody's mind, and we're here right, uh, in, in, right near where it's happening, basically. Anyway, let's go back. Let's, let's bring it back down a little bit. Let's chat a little bit. Let's talk a little bit. Let's think about what we're doing with our lives. Where do we go from here? What do we do next? What do you guys want to do? I love it. We, I, you know, I talk about Trump and then there's like Europeans who are watching international people and they're like, what's going on with Trump? I have no idea. <laughs> and, and then that was not obviously in a European accent. I don't know what that was. But yes, Biocode. Biocode is Norwegian apparently and has not been following the news. But yes, yeah, they've indicted him. 
and uh, they're bringing him in to face his, to face the charges, and it's a big deal. And there's more press out there than anyone else. It's like a a press riot. <laughs> they're you know they've got high security and they're expecting protesters, and it's mostly like news vans and reporters hanging out where they're bringing him in. So yeah, enough about that. We're here to talk about techno. It's a different tea. It's Techno Tuesday today. Normally it's Saturday. And uh, I'm having this, um, we're playing around this. What, that's what we've been doing today. Checking out the, the, the public beta live 11.3 and checking out the new Drift synth, which is, I feel like it's a nice balance of easy to access, right? It's not too crazy. It's, you know, it's analog style subtractive, right? Let's zoom in on this so we can take a look at it. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was sort of where we started out, right? Was this whole new track I'm working on is based on exploring what drift sounds like. I came up with kind of a rhythmic bass thing and, uh, figuring out, you know, how, what's the tone of this? What do the waveforms sound like? What are the modulate? What does the filter sound like? What uh, are the modulation possibilities? And, um, it's got some nice ones, not crazy. You can't do anything to anything. And I, and I, right away, I ran into that limit of, uh, how the, the sample and hold was re-triggering or wasn't re-triggering in the way that I would expect it to. So I, I turned to a max for live solution of using expression control to send a random value every time I play a note so I could get the, the shape of the waveform to change the way I wanted it to, right? So that's what led to that sound, that, that main sound that this track is based around. And got that going. And then, you know, I... I got this rolling sampler out, which again, it was new to me, not necessarily new, but really like this workflow of being able to just always have audio running. And if you, you know, you do something interesting with your sound design or tweaking or playing around and you, you, it's, you could just grab it and throw it in your session view and you've got the audio and it, you don't have to, all you have to do is remember to load that plug in. You don't have to route audio to a track and hit record. It's just always going. And I think that's superlative if I say so. Uh, and then, um, right. And then the other thing was, you know, I got some drums going, we're trying out the samples from Mars stuff that I bought recently. And, uh, you know, I, there's a lot more to explore there. There's like hundreds, hundreds, thousands of drum samples to, to, to load up and, and try. And then it was also kind of exploring like the, the prettier side of this nice new synthesizer. And I loaded up this preset, these bells with the detuning and the floating around and the drifting in pitch, which is sort of a hallmark of this new device, right? That, and then I think it's really designed to work well with MIDI polyphonic expression to have expressive keyboard sounds, that kind of thing. So let's, uh, let's bliss out for the last couple of minutes. I really like this. Who knows if I'm going to keep it and use it in this track or not. Maybe I'll just make a nice ambient track out of it. I really like what's happening with the spectral resonator. Right, we've got the MIDI notes coming in to control the resonator, so the resonator's staying in tune with the synth. Got that granular pitch modulation going on. You can shift the harmonics. That's really nice. I'll use that instead of a filter sweep any day. That stretching is crazy. Right, and then we've got the spectral blur, which is just beautiful. I should record some of that to audio. All right. 
nice blissful high note to leave on today i think thanks again everybody for hanging out on this tuesday this techno tuesday to check out this new plugin this new synth in the update of ableton live and in the public beta and uh i will see you guys not this saturday but the following later in april after the holiday that i'm about to go on taking my kids to see their grandparents it's gonna be nice and uh Thanks again to everybody watching today, all of the, the the new live viewers. Really glad to see you here. Glad you guys are having fun chatting and talking and hanging out. That's it for now. Until next time, have a good one. Adios.